Everyone loves a fast Ford. From the Lotus Cortina to the Escort Cosworth, highly developed versions of run-of-the-mill motors have been built to allow the Blue Oval to take to the tracks and blow away the opposition. And now, fans of Ford look set to be in for another real treat. But this time, the modified metal isn't based on some shabby saloon car like the others. It's based on the Puma, Top Gear's car of the year in 97. So with such a promising start, how can it possibly fail? Called the Ford Racing Puma, it's one of a run of just a thousand cars which are only being made available in Great Britain. But this time, despite its name, it's a limited edition that isn't actually intended for racing. It's been developed by Ford Racing Europe with a brief to turn the standard Puma into an even purer driver's machine. On the inside, I'm afraid that just means a big dollop of blue Alcantara trim, which skillfully falls between gaudy and garish. And the racing Puma only comes in blue. It's also got these horrible half-and-half -half steering wheels. It's the same wheel as on the standard Puma, they've just added the Alcantara on this little bit. And it's not even stuck on very well, so it provides a very inconsistent grip. Not nice at all. However, the biggest change is that they've added these excellent Sparco racing seats, which really do grip you everywhere you want to be held and provide that racing feel. But where this car really differs is externally. The track has been widened, the wheels are bigger, housed under flared arches, aluminium at the front, and there's a new front spoiler. It's how all Pumas should look, not effeminate as if they're on tippy toes, but muscular and poised, like, well, like a Puma. Of course, there's more to those changes than just good looks. Those bigger wheels hide uprated brakes, and stiffer springing provides race car grip. So how does that translate into the real world? Well, that depends on what sort of surface you're driving on. If it's billiard table smooth, then it's brilliant. But find a few bumps and odd cambers, and all of a sudden it's darting about all over the place. Now I think I'm beginning to realise what sort of racing driver this racing Puma is designed for. It's not the real world one, it's the computer kid who's constantly used to making lots of little tiny corrections to keep his imaginary car on the road. It's a kid's fun thing which you can hustle around country lanes at perfectly legal speeds with loads of grip to spare, yet feeling like you're Michael Schumacher on heat. Engine tweaks up the power to 153 bhp, but when you actually look at the figures, it's only three miles an hour faster than the standard Puma and about half a second quicker to 60. Yes, the driving experience is much more fun, but it's not eight grand more fun. This Puma will set you back a huge £22,750, which is hard to justify. No, I'm sorry. I know that the racing Puma will be on the top of every kid's wish list, but you simply can't sensibly recommend it to anyone. It's just an overpriced child's toy. Cut. Cool. Is that it, then? All done? You won't be taking the Puma home, then. Don't be stupid. Of course I will. <laughs>